You're listening to the Breezy Moms podcast on digital stream radio. Sometimes you just want to quit, but tonight's guest reminds us to stay the course with some healthy real life strategies to get through. So stick around. Hey, everyone, you're listening to the Breezy Moms podcast, a weekly show that chronicles the adventures of motherhood. I'm Candace. Now let's start the show. Hey, hey, hey. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you, Candace? I'm so excited to be here tonight. I know. It's been way too it long. It feels like forever. I know. We've had a couple of weeks off because of Thanksgiving mm-hmm. and things like that. And, uh, and scheduling and just allowing myself and allowing us to take some like breaks. I think the, the lead up, I mean, we're at episode 78 tonight. That's right. And I was so... Um, focused on like coming every single week and never missing a week and blah, blah, blah. And, and now I feel like I have a, a groove. We're in a groove and it feels like, yes, I want to make sure that I'm still consistent, but I also can take a break if my brain needs a break because yeah, there's no I, sense in being here. <laughs> but I still tell her, I'm like, you know, you should try to at least record every week. So uh, obviously, um, yeah, you should try. But if I yeah. can't, then the show's going to be wild anyway because I'm going to be here a hot mess. Last week mm-hmm. was a hot mess for me. I'm the, I, I could have come last week. But I didn't because I shouldn't have been out of my house. And so. that's quite right. But, you know, <laughs> last week we had a lot of weather yeah, that's stuff. True. And, you know, it's the week right after Thanksgiving. Um, Thanksgiving and, and, you know, you're trying to, like, get everything ready and get the Christmas tree up and do all that crazy stuff. Wait, is and yours up? I didn't, no. I didn't even see it. This no. Is now. Okay. No. I don't Mine even own up. one. Oh, okay. And I don't need to, <laughs> you know, end up with, like, loads of praying mantis trying to, like, survive in my house. What are you talking about? Um, um, did you see that now they're showing like these little like egg sacks on trees and they're saying these are not like like nuts or anything. If It looks like an like an. Are these on real trees? Yes. OK. And so what they're saying is these are sacks full of praying mantis eggs. So oh, if you see shit. these on your tree, don't, you know, throw them out. Don't do want to just go and put them outside and leave them outside because supposedly, you know, it's, it's the right thing to do. <laughs> and, um, and that they're important. Me, I would probably look at the sack and think it's a spider's oh my God. nest of eggs and burn the whole tree down. But, I'm having a heart attack right now. Just yeah, thinking about so, it. This is why I have an artificial tree. <laughs> my, that's what, like, I'm like, people, why deal with sacks when you can just go buy them and they have lights on them. And and they're amazing, and you don't have to like put every single strand on I anymore. Know, like know. they come in three parts. That's what I have. Mine's pushing four Easy. years, at least four years now. You know, so yeah, yeah. No, I know, and I mean, I know that there's an environmental side. Actually, they've decided now that, uh, and it it the pendulum swings. So I feel like before they said let's save all the trees and everybody get an artificial tree, and now they're like, oh, the carbon footprint of making the artificial trees is worse than just getting a real tree. I was like, at the end of the day, I already have an artificial tree, and it's probably not helping anybody for me to throw mine out Mm -hmm. in order to go buy a real one. So, like most things in my house, store? No. No! No. (laughs) (laughs) I am so deep into a declutter, like, rage purge over the last couple couple weeks. I'm not storing shit. (laughs) I don't need another thing. So, first and foremost, if you're listening for the first time, um, you know, Candace uh, likes to, um, she's been on this declutter kick, so, and she posts a lot. Because hoarding is in my blood. Yeah, I know. It's, like, genetically coded to who I am. It is a thing. And most most people who are hoarders, you don't even know that you're hoarding. It's it's just a part of who you are. And I am trying to fight it tooth and friggin' nail. So what I was what I was gonna say was that you know you can follow Candace and all of her amazing adventures on the uh Breezy Moms podcast on Facebook. Because you're always on task. That's right. You know, she <laughs> posts all of her all of her videos, pictures of her amazing beautiful children and all of their adventures. And of course our podcast is available on iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher Radio. It's also on Spotify, Spotify which you I do always them forget. Dirty. <laughs> I do. And uh it's available also um on did I say Podbean? Mm, I don't know. Well, actually, it is hosted by Podbean, mm-hmm. and you can find it on digitalstreamradio.com under our podcast section there, and mm-hmm. among all the other shows that we do here on Digital Stream Radio. So, um, 
that's I just wanted to get that out there. Yeah, it's the work. That's that's why I have a producer because <sighs> I would never remember that. It'd be forty five minutes in, and people are like, "Where are you again?" Doesn't matter. <laughs> but anyway, the point the show was, is for me. <laughs> go to the at Breezy Moms podcast page on Facebook and like it and follow her because I can guarantee you. A lot of the stuff that she posts will have you smiling, will have you feeling all kinds of ways, and uh, and you should. You uh, should definitely do thank that. Thank you. I appreciate that. And the the thing, if I can like say, well, I'll, I'll say because I talk, that's what I do, um, is that the, the goal of all of the posts is just to remind people that it's not just you. Because a lot of times I get texts right after I post something, I was like, and it's like, you too? Me too? I can't believe you're doing it. Like, it's the same things. We're all going through the same thing if you have a kid you're dealing with like last night my kid went to sleep at six o'clock on the couch and everybody who saw that picture knew that i was in for a oh you were in i for was a in lot for of it and that little mm, joy of my life woke up at 10 o'clock 10 30 and he snuck in the room like a ninja and he was i turned i was i was getting ready for bed i was like oh i'm winning it's gonna be a six to six night yes fingers crossed right and i was getting ready for bed and i turned around because something caught my eye and he goes i want to sleep in your bed and i was like whoa <laughs> what is happening you're a big man now go to yours and it was 10 30 and mm. for about a half an hour he sort of like tossed and turned and tried to fall back asleep and couldn't and i was like dude here watch a show and i like i didn't know what else to do so i got in the in my pajamas under the blanket i was like i can feel his foot and I'm just going to ride this as long as I can. And he sat there. I don't know what he watched. I don't know how much time went by. And then when he couldn't handle it anymore, he, he poked me. He was like, Mom, I need food. I was like, what is happening uh, Midnight here? snacker, huh? So I had to go down and get him some. I think I got him some yogurt and some goldfish. I was in a like haze, like a blinded haze trying to figure out what can I get him that I will be okay with him eating in my bed? Because I'm not waking up all the way to bring him down to the kitchen. But I also don't want to roll over some like Ritz crackers crinkling on my pillow. You know what I mean? And so I took I took the extra second to put the yogurt into a squeezy. I have reusable squeezy pouches. Yeah. I was oh, like, hell, of course you do. Of course I do. But I was like, hell no, I'm not bringing a cup and a spoon up of yogurt into my bed. No way. And so I did that and I figured the, what are they called? The goldfish? Go, like nobody bites a goldfish, right? So there's less option for. That's what you um, think, right? When you think they won't do it, that's when they're. That's true. It's that's all true. over the place. He doesn't. He tosses them in. So you know what he did instead was after he ate all of the goldfish, he decided he wanted to explore the bowl. And so now whatever little little crinkles were left he's like flipping the bowl over on the pillow i was like i thought we were golden like you're trying to kill me nope anyway he was awake until 2 30 and i thought i was going to shave my eyebrows off and so we finally went back to sleep and so this morning i was on my own for drop off i never do drop off but uh james has been tra traveling and so when seven o'clock came, I was like, oh, we can't, I can't, we can't, this is not happening. And I thought, okay, we'll just get through the morning. And then once all the kids are here, the daycare kids will just like Brady Bunch it down the street and drop them off at afterwards. But then a bunch of my clients showed up late too. And I was like, all right, guys, uh, we'll just have a mental health day. Stay home. <laughs> like, hang out with me. It's going to be fine. It's only pre-K. It's going to be all right. And so they stayed home and we had like a pretty awesome day. And the only other thing that I'll say, like the other thing that sort of cinched for me that I was going to keep them home was the last few days they have missed so much recess time. And I don't even have to be told when they don't have recess. They come in and they are bouncing off the walls, just like they run circles around the house. Lincoln flips six times over one couch like it's just insane and he looks at me and he goes we didn't have recess <laughs> and so part of why I kept them home today was because I knew that we are outside for at least an hour and so I was like let's go outside you'll get an hour of cold sunshine on your face and I feel like it will rejuvenate all of us <laughs> And so that's what they did. They stayed home. We were outside for about a little over an hour this morning. Rolling. They, I mean, they're throwing themselves into the snow, rolling around in the ground, playing in icy cold water. I was like, do you, boo? I'm going to sit right here hey, and watch Hey, listen. You. Mom was one of those. Go outside. Go play. I'm cleaning. And mm -hmm. we had come back like seven hours later starving. Like, That's the goal. Cook? That's yeah, the goal. And then you would eat. And, you know, she would encourage that you eat fast so that she could hurry up and 
pick up all the dishes and wash them and have them done and set and dried and put away just in time for her novelas. Right. <laughs> she was like, I don't want to miss my seven o'clock novela, so yes, hurry up. Yes, yes. And so, the kitchen has to be clean before that. Of course. I totally you know, get it. I she's, totally get she's, it. She's... Ah, mommy I dearest, know, I call I her. Um, she's like Joan Crawford incarnate, that woman, <laughs> pretty much. That's amazing. Listen, every old toothbrush that I ever owned was never thrown away because it was used to clean the edges of all oh the... Oh, my God. Like, seriously. She was like, she would give us a little cup with water and a little bleach and a toothbrush, and she would say, okay, go, scrub, wipe, and keep moving. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I'm not that mom. I'm not going to say we were tortured, but... Um, <laughs> you were put to work. Borderline. <laughs> Like in some countries, that's illegal, mm -hmm. including this one. Yeah, but not for your own kids. But it's like, you didn't even pay me. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to pay you. But, yeah. I put these lights on. <laughs> I saw a meme the, the other day that was like, um, things I want for Christmas. Well, I'm really into electricity and heat's good and groceries work and gas works. Like, the, those things work. Speaking of electricity, get mm -hmm. what acti guess what got activated today? Ooh. My solar. Yay! It finally, finally got the permission or the, excuse me, the release from the town. Mm -hmm. They contacted the electric company. They came out and put a meter today. I forgot to tell them that I had a server down here. And I was like, yeah, just go ahead and exchange a meter. I came in. Everything was off. I was oh, like, no. But, today, before we recorded. Uh -huh. <laughs> And uh, but but I survived. Good, I survived. good. I came in. I turned on all the computers, reactivated the server. The websites were good, and I was like, "Oh, thank God." <laughs> um, but yeah, that's yeah, great. It was a crazy day, uh, but it's, it was fun. I was going to ask you how were the boys, but obviously, you know, they were recessed that's how they and, are. and and all that good stuff. And, yeah, and they're exhausted. really good. And then James, so James was gone for a couple days, and he just got back. He literally pulled in. Um, right as I was leaving. So we did a very fast. We usually have, I'm usually late because we do a changing of the guard. And I was like, I gotta go. I'll see you later. <laughs> so he's back now. And so it was two nights and I guess three days without him. And I wasn't, I think I was fine. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess maybe I'm not sure because the kids didn't go to school today. So. <laughs> that was short hashtag. Don't ever do it again. No, I think it's fine. I think I told him I was like, things always work out for me. Remember, I've said that before, because the first day he was gone, the first morning he was gone, there was a two hour delay for school. The biggest the biggest uh, thing that we were both worried about or I was or any of us were worried about was that I usually open at 745 and I was going to have to get the kids to school and back home in time to open for eight. I extended my first client. I was like, you have to come at eight because I can't I can't do 745. Um, but the first day there was a two hour delay for school, which meant I also had a two hour delay. And I was like, look, it, things always work out for me. Hey, listen, <laughs> it's like gravy, right? It was really great. It was really good. Yeah. Well, that's um, awesome. So yeah. I'm excited because today we have someone special joining yeah, us. Yeah, I'm super excited. We have a, so we have a guest. Um, I don't want to do it. Or... Yes. Yeah, so we have a guest on who's coming on um, in a few minutes. Or are we doing this now? No, no. You whenever you're ready. It's your show, girl. Well, I was going to ask you how you were doing. And then <laughs> no, but we can we can jump into that. <laughs> oh, OK. Well, then maybe I don't care about how you were doing. You'll tell us later. Though. I'm doing fabulous. I'm always doing fabulous. I'm running around doing 20,000 things at one time. <laughs> when we're done with this show, I'm going to run to the bar that I work at on weekends and, because you uh, have 16 jobs like every Puerto Rican I know. Yes. <laughs> and so we're going to, what was it that I called it? Um, trim the tree. So mm. we have all these little ornaments and we encourage our, our patrons to bring an ornament. And in exchange for that ornament, they get a free cocktail. Ooh. And so we decorate the tree with the ornaments Where's so the every bar? year. It's Partners Cafe mm -hmm. located at 365 Crown Street in New Haven, Connecticut. Mm. Oh, I don't have any ornaments. I was just going to figure out how I could go and get a cocktail before I go home. Like literally, you can just go right into to uh, Walgreens, which is right across the street, mm. buy an ornament. I might consider it. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Although James just did just get home, so I should probably go home. Yeah, I know. That's right. That's, Got a lot that's of catching the right up things to, do. to do. Three days of catching up. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, ask me doing. again. I'm ready to. I'm ready to go. What are we doing? Uh, um, ask me again about our guest. Oh, so what? So so we have a guest on today. <laughs> you see, this is what we do, guys. This is what we do. Uh, so we have a guest on today, and I'm super excited. You were telling me that she does 
this amazing thing with with uh, teachers. Teachers, yeah, yeah. And uh, and I'm I can't wait to listen and, I know, and hear I got about a whole it. Thing. So I'm gonna sit back and let you ladies do it. So we're gonna bring her in, and I'm gonna let you cue that in. All right, here we go. Okay, you ready? Everybody ready? It. Okay. So tonight's guest founded Stay the Course and has been fueled by a lifelong passion for teaching and leading in the class- classroom. Mm, that's the blue moon. She has a psych degree and an early childhood education degree, and her career began at Teach for America. Now she has been teaching and coaching, and she's got management experience for the last 10 years with an emphasis on equity and inclusiveness, which is always a good thing. Always. Over seven years working directly with school-based staff in D.C., she has kept teachers in the their spots where they should be at a rate of 94%, which is a big deal because... That's incredible. I think that's a big deal. I mean, I don't know what the rates I mean, are for other things, but... W- when you think about... It, I g- wanted to quit twice this week, so yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> given given the way things are right now and how focused people are on testing and scores, um, you know, you start to think about um, the stress that teachers go through, right? Mm-hmm. And, and how that impacts... How they, how their energy impacts the students that they're trying to teach, mm-hmm. and so finding a way to be able to deal with that, I think, is important. Is given the the conversation that we're having, even with with today's administration and and all the things that are happening around education and funding being cut, and it's like it's hard to to be a teacher in today's America. You know, Absolutely. you're finding yourself spending all this money that you can't even claim on your taxes as <laughs> stuff that you spent for work and it's just ridiculous and i think that you know teachers in this country are severely underpaid absolutely and uh, and severely stressed i mean they're dealing with your children people well that's why we have tonight's guest oh my god it's amazing who in addition to having been a teacher before is now a coach which is this business that she's doing um called stay the course and she's led numerous professional learning experiences and educator wellness and value based leadership and all the like fancy words that I've forgotten how to use because I don't leave my house anymore. Um, Anyway, Katie, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Oh my gosh. Thank you for having me. It's so so funny. I'm sitting here in my kitchen laughing out loud at (laughs) you two. That's great. (laughs) My partner and my kittens are like, what is she laughing at? What's going on? (laughs) Because they can't hear because you have in the headphones. I love it. That's the best. It's like psycho. It's, you know what I mean? It's it's usually the case, like people listening to podcasts, like for example, I listen to a lot of podcasts at work and typically I do so with headsets on. (laughs) And when I do and I hear something funny, because chances are you are, you start laughing out loud and your coworkers are like, what is wrong with him (laughs) or her or anyone? Um, Yeah. So I'm just over here giggling. And I would also add on the subject of Christmas trees or holiday trees, holiday decorations, I would say, we're not even there yet. We still have our holiday, um, our holiday, our Halloween lights up. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. Do what so, you can. <laughs> speaking of being busy and juggling lots of things, we're we're not even at the winter holidays yet. <laughs> but at least you decorate, right? Like we you try. Could, you could we not. try. That's great. Yeah. You know, like I suddenly I realized that all those people that leave their like Christmas lights on all year long, like they never take them down. Mm, they're geniuses. It's true. Oh no, that's Cause... us. We actually okay. Listen, okay. Sidetrack. But our HOA took a picture of our house in April, and they were like, "You still have your your, your holiday lights up. You need to take them down now." You know, listen. You're not the boss of me. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing yeah that's funny All right, anyways well, thank you for having me I'm I'm really happy to be here me too I'm so glad you're here and a, a quick caveat like I'm so glad I can't even remember now if I saw something on our so Katie and I went to the same high school we didn't overlap in time but we did go to the same high school and I can't remember now if I saw something in the bulletin or if I saw something on Facebook about you were you in the bulletin Oh, it, so they do this, like, they call it Forever True Friday, because okay. Forever True is part of the school song. Yep. So they feature alumni and the cool things that they're doing. And they reached out to me. I don't know how they came across my work, but that's that may be where, where and you And was it in the bulletin me. or was it on Facebook? It was on Facebook and Instagram. Oh, see, that's where it was. So that's, anyway, yeah. I, I love my network is always, um, my network is so, like, I'm so happy and thankful for the network of people that I have, Thanks. because there's so many cool people around just doing awesome really yeah. awesome stuff so i saw i saw your information there and i was like mm, we went to the same school i could just call her and <laughs> you were such a joy to talk to and um so oh, like, I, gotcha. yeah. I know well it's 
how else are you going to I call do her this? a stalker because she's like, she goes and like literally <laughs> looks up all of her tough. Uh, all, all the people is like, mm, you might be interesting to talk to. Come on. Let's, come on. Let's get, <laughs> oh, get no, her I, I'm telling you over the phone and I'm super awkward over the phone, but like we hit it off right away. I felt an immediate connection and I, and uh, Candace just thanks again for having me. Absolutely. So let's just jump right in and yeah. tell us a little bit about how you started Stay the Course and why you chose the name because I love the name. Yeah, well, and it's funny that this is a podcast for moms and parents and caregivers because the story behind the name of my business, it started with with my mom. Uh So my background is in early childhood education. I was a preschool teacher. My mom was a preschool teacher for almost 15 years. She's now a nurse. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've got that in our genes. Uh, but she, my first year of teaching was really hard and she would just say, stay the course. I would call her on Friday nights when I was exhausted. I would call her on Sunday nights when I needed a pep talk for the week ahead. And she just helped me build that resilience um, that allowed me to navigate that first year. I was in grad school. I was dealing with four-year-olds every day. Oh my gosh. And (laughs) there's a funny story about my first day of teaching. Most of my students were Spanish speakers Uh and I, I would, I had some level of Spanish, but I, I told, I was telling them to wash their hands with la, la sopa. Uh-huh. Oh my God. <laughs> Which is not soap. That is not soap. <laughs> so, no, so my, what's my wrong with this lady? <laughs> yeah. My four-year-olds were looking at me like I was crazy. So there's just stories like that where I, I was learning and growing and evolving. And that's really where this work comes from. I left the classroom to coach teachers and then I managed coaches and, and just was seeing more and more teachers leave the classroom for this emotional labor. And you were just saying like, this is a very different political climate. Mm -hmm. Um, there is social media kids are playing less. And so they're coming to us with a very unique set of social and emotional needs. Mm -hmm. And while there's a lot of curricula out there, there's a lot of efforts being uh, put towards caring for for students' well being, we're not doing a whole lot to address teachers' well being. Mm-hmm. And when we do, it's typically separate from the work. So it's like go to yoga, um, <laughs> get your eight hours of sleep, right? But my work is really around making the job itself sustainable and getting it, getting in there with them. Yeah. That's great, and that's why I connected. I mean. I am not a preschool teacher, but I take care of kids all the day. I'm a childcare provider, right? You get it. And so, and, and I'm a mom and the, the, the crossroads of that, that's not the right term, but where those two things meet for me, right? Being a mom and taking care of kids. When I saw the information about what you were doing, like it totally rung, uh, like was just a light bulb for me because so many times people think that, if if you're struggling as a mom, then you must be a terrible mom, right? Or if you're struggling as a teacher, then maybe you shouldn't be teaching. And that's not the case. Like the shit is hard. So if you can get easy. if you can get the support that you need, that's different from bath bombs and fucking yoga that I can't find the time to go to, then like <laughs> <laughs> this is what's helpful for me. <laughs> Well, that's why I love that we're talking about this because I think what I'm able to share with you with you and your audience today is both like how we care for the people that we love, but also how do we find these conditions for ourselves? Who who provides these conditions for us as mm-hmm. caregivers? Okay, so we talked about how this so as caregivers we're going from both ends of the spec the spectrum, right? Your your toddlers mm-hmm. and babies um mm-hmm. and school te- and teachers of um school kids uh to the elderly. So tell me a little bit about how this extends to us. Yeah. So the framework that I use for both the coaching, like the individual coaching and the professional development that that I bring to schools and districts and organizations, it's based on actually a counseling framework Mm -hmm. adapted. It's what I do is not clinical, but it's adapted from this framework called um, person centered. What it is counseling. That's the research. But I I call it person centered coaching, person centered support. And it's grounded in three core conditions. And the core conditions are empathy, um, authenticity, authenticity or congruence and unconditional positive regard. The idea is that we are all we're human. Being human is messy Mm. and we just need to commit to to caring for and accepting each other in wherever we are along that journey. Mm -hmm. And so we lean into those core conditions, whether I'm coaching a teacher, whether it's a child having a tantrum in the grocery store, whether it's a a parent or a grandparent who is struggling with maybe a, um, a 
losing their independence, Mm -hmm. right? We still want to connect with them through empathy. (laughs) We want to hold them to high expectations and hold ourselves to high expectations for how we treat them. And and this idea of unconditional positive regard, which is really hard, Mm. um, but probably most important, it's just acceptance. Yeah. It's just saying that this journey through life, it can be messy and complicated and we commit to accepting one another as we are. So I think the challenge for you and your audience is thinking about we as caregivers, we do that for others. Who does that for us? Mm -hmm. How do we seek that out where we feel accepted in this (laughs) messy journey? It's true. Makes sense. So when you're doing the coaching and you're, you're, you're engaging with another uh, academic professional, do you do this in the setting of the classroom and where you're, so this is done like right where this person works so that it brings an emphasis to, if this is where you think the issue st- is stemming from, this is where we need to resolve the issue, right? Because the you cool, can't do it outside yes, of that. Yes, exactly. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, um, that's it. I mean, I think the difference between this wellness conversation that we talk about with teachers, which, okay, this you mentioned, like, it's separate. You have to get, you have to, get to yoga somehow. Mm-hmm. You have to pay for it, right? Yep. This is like, what is, where are you this week and what do you need? So it, one week it might be having a um, challenging conversation to manage up with your coach at school. It might be ha- thinking about your identity markers and how those show up in your role as a teacher. If you're working across lines of difference, mm-hmm. how do you communicate? How do you navigate conflict? How do you express emotion? It could be building emotional intelligence. So b- it just meets teachers where they are basically. And do you, are you, um, on staff at a school or are you on staff at the soup, the, the school department or I mean the department of education? I typically approach schools and districts, networks, whatever, and just say, here's what I'm offering. Mm -hmm. I want to hear more about what you're seeing in terms of retention and satisfaction. I, I listen to their challenges and I, if it's a good fit, then that's, that organization will bring me on. So there's nothing, there's no cost direct to teachers. Yeah, that's this great. is, this is meant to be part of their experience at work. And what I'm finding, like we say that teachers are already strapped for time. Um, but I rarely get a no show. Mm. I, every, everyone shows up to our meetings. Mm-hmm. Um, my survey data shows that this time feels valuable to them. And honestly, <laughs> at this point this year, um, I don't have any, in-person contracts. I, it's all virtual. Oh, wow. So I'm kind of all over the country. That's amazing. <laughs> Even over the phone, teachers are so quick to, within five minutes, they, they are um, ready to share and okay. ready to talk and feel heard. But I think so that's, that's important. been kind of cool. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I think that's also important, right? When you're, when you're looking for this type of of guidance, right, to sort of kind of find your center and, and reacclimate yourself with what you do, um, it, it's important to recognize that you need to to put the time in, right, and make the effort to to find something that will help you get regrounded in what you're doing that, you know, all of a sudden is making you feel a little off. Yeah, and there's a saying, and I shared this with Candace on our initial call, there's a, a phrase that Elena Aguilar, she wrote a book called Onward, which is, which, uh, is a deep dive into resilience in schools, basically like this work that we're talking about. And she has a phrase and she says to hell with martyrdom. And I think that has really, that's really stuck with me. And I actually have a whole session that's like built out for school teams around this <clears throat> for your audience, women, mothers, anyone who's in a caring profession, we're socialized to sacrifice. Mm. And, uh, that that feeling of martyrdom is one, a recipe for burnout. Mm -hmm. two it's really deficit based so if you think about i think this was so smart that elena uh, writes about in her book like what does that say about the people around you if you feel like the work won't get done unless you do it unless you work 60 hours a week unless you exhaust yourself Mm -hmm. right and you dig yourself into this hole what does it say about the kids you work with the families you work with um the communities you work with so I, I just thought that was so brilliant. And the problem is it's deeply rooted in who we are and where we come from. So for example, I was raised Catholic and like sacrifice is glorified mm, mm-hmm. in, in, from in that. Absolutely. <laughs> Big time. Yeah. In that particular space. So it's really hard to overcome. So what I try to do and what I'd like to offer today is it's like permission to just, to just reject that culture. of martyrdom. <laughs> Katie said, to- I don't have to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't go to yoga, Candace. 
<laughs> no, but I, but but I think I I think it, it makes sense, right? Because we grow up thinking that we should be a certain way, not realizing that that could harm us in the long run. Yet we continue to do it because that's what we think is right. Right. Well, or I mean, accepted of us. I, absolutely. Yeah. Even if you're not a parent and you're parent or not, if you're working, right? Nobody is like, oh, it's five o'clock. It's time to go. People are like waiting to see who can be the last one. Like you're looking to make sure that so and so leaves so that they think that you're last. Oh, to leave. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you're just conditioned, like you said, that you have to give all of this extra in order to even be seen as doing enough. Right. The thing is, I, I, when I was coaching teachers, it was really easy for me to say, oh, block time on your calendar right. to right. get home on time or block time in your calendar to go to the yoga or the mm-hmm. meditation or whatever. The thing is, if you don't believe that you are worth it mm-hmm. and that it matters, it's not going to happen. It's too easy to schedule over. Right. It's too easy to repurpose that time for the demands of our family, our household, our jobs. So it, so again, I, like a lot of my coaching is just around like you, you have to believe that it's okay for you to leave at five o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> and in fact, you need it. Yep. Right. So, what else, so, so basically it puts an emphasis on work-life balance, right? Knowing that you have to work, but knowing that you also have a personal life and that you need to equally, um, you know, put in, put them both in an important regard enough to, to understand that it's okay to leave at five, right? to then go do what you need to do and find yourself in a position where now you feel accomplished because you've done both, right? You've yeah. dealt with your needs at home, you've dealt with your needs at work, and you found a little time to do something personal for yourself. And mm-hmm. when you're done, it's it's gratifying. It makes you feel good. And you can be nicer to everybody. <laughs> well, <true. laughs> well, that's it. So a lot of my conversations are like, okay, so you're fully present at work, but you're exhausted you're exhausted when you get home. Right. And that's where, that's my entry point into this work with teachers. And what I like hope that parents are, are able to do for themselves is like, how, how do you make your day easier? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who, you, who do you need to talk to? Do you just need 15 minutes to lay down, to be, I, I like to call it to be vertical. Right. You know, you don't need to sleep or nap, but just like be vertical. Yep. Oh, not vertical. Horizontal. Oh Horizontal. Horizontal. Thank you. Yep. It's a long day. It's eight o'clock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I know. So you know that's what I did yesterday was stole 15. 15- I don't know how long it was, but I was hiding from my kids because, again, my husband was traveling. So I was in the kitchen hiding, trying to, like, decompose. That's not the word. Decompress. <laughs> um, because vertical and decompose. Right, right. <laughs> um, decompress from the day because yeah. working at home, you there's no, like, pack up your stuff, put on your coat and leave, right? And in that time, my kid fell asleep. And I was like, well, shit. I just, I was trying to do one thing and it caused me, you know, you're trying to fix one issue and it causes you another problem. I literally was going to, like, comment on, on the picture and just be like, wake him up. Up. I know, but <laughs> I was like, yeah, you're you don't have kids yet because I I look at it and I'm like, I know I should, I know I should, but I can't. Like it's quiet. <laughs> I can't. I can't. And I, what I did instead was use that time as one again. It's not like I got to go to yoga. I used that time as one on one time with my other kid. Right? <laughs> like yeah. you still find ways. <laughs> To even when and if both of them were sleeping, I would have been doing laundry or something, you know, like you still find ways to fill in all of your time. Um, My family went like my husband took the kids to Massachusetts on Saturday for an overnight. And I like did eight loads of laundry and decluttered the basement like I should have sat on the couch with a face mask on and, you know, not done anything. But that's not how my brain works. Right. Or it's not how I think my brain is supposed to work. I just think we we're, we're like the the conversation around quote unquote self care now is like lay in bed, have a glass of wine. It, it, there's like certain things that we identify we associate with this self-care. idea of self care, but self care also means going to the, the doctor. Yeah, mm-hmm. it means doing the loads of laundry you need to do. It means getting to the grocery store so you can meal plan for the week. You yeah. know, it's so I I I hear that like you had to do what you had to do to, to feel do, yeah. set up for. Yeah. And for me Without right me. now, tech, actually, for me right now, self-care is is this like I'm calling it rage purging. But for me, self-care is um, is decluttering my physical space because my I've, like I've been reading some things about how uh, clutter causes anxiety in your brain because and the 
the things that I didn't realize is because your eyes and your brain don't get to rest because there's like a thing here and you have to buy step some toys here and you have to jump over some, you know what I mean? Like all of that stuff you don't realize is keeping your brain working. Even if you had 15 minutes to sit down and relax, if you sat down on the couch and you looked around and there was like laundry everywhere, it's exhausting. It is exhausting just to look at it. I mean, the mere fact that you have to walk around your house when you have children trying to remember to look down so that you don't step (laughs) on Legos. It's yeah. incredibly exhausting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I wanted to ask you, so in your profession, um, what do you find are your challenges when you're working with adults um, that need to, you know, find a way to to sort of kind of get centered again? What is the most challenging part of, of what you try to do with them? Uh, well, the work that I do is deeply personal. I mean, we will talk about how a teacher may feel triggered by an experience in the classroom. We talk about where that trigger comes from. And typically it's rooted in childhood or it's rooted in life experience. It's rooted in identity markers that shape their worldviews. Um, so the, I would say the biggest challenges are it, it's this mindset coaching, mm. you know, let's, let's uncover that and doing it in a safe space. And that's why those core conditions are so important. That unconditional positive regard and that sense of empathy. Cause I've heard some, I've heard some crazy things. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, <laughs> But I, as a coach, have to maintain that sense of safety, that sense of trust, the space where a teacher can work through that that messiness. Yeah. Um, and I would say that's probably that's probably the hardest. And and I don't change doesn't happen overnight. Evolution doesn't have happen overnight. And people have created those conditions for me, and that's how I know that. Mm. When I think about myself ten years ago and my understanding of self and my self-regulation and all those things, uh, my professionalism, uh, people have done that for me. And so I, I want to create that space for teachers. When you, when you say that, you mean like we think, Oh, I talked to Katie three times already. I should be better. Or like giving ourselves the, the space to take time to recover. Both. I think there, I think, um, there is always a sense of pressure and urgency when you work with students, when you work with kids, when you're, you know, this Candace, yeah. when you're around kids all day long, like they have one shot at first grade, right, they have one right. shot at ninth grade. So teachers feel this in- incredible sense of urgency and, um, and that's really important. And like, we have to be kind to our- ourselves and give ourselves grace, mm-hmm. whether it's implementing a new curriculum, whether it's, Oh my gosh, I'm realizing a bias that I have. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm calling, I'm consequencing my black boys more than my, my girls mm-hmm. in my preschool classroom, right? Mm-hmm. There's a, there was a famous study that came out. I mean, not famous, maybe right. in the education space, but a couple of years ago around biases that teachers have. Right. And those are very real. And like, it's hard to confront those. Mm-hmm. So if I'm in a teacher's classroom and I have a data point that says, yeah, this bias is living out and it's harming children. That's really hard to confront and deal with. Mm-hmm. So, so let's, next time. let's jump into strategies. What are some of the strategies that you give people that teachers that you think would um, translate to uh, caregivers, parents, yeah. that sort of thing? I think community is really important. Isolation is uh, it, that is a huge threat to retention in the education space. But also, like, as I think about parenthood, feeling alone, that you're not going to last. You're going to, you're not going to make it. You right. know, People that's, work that's in their really house. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so I would, I usually tell my, my folks, uh, and I, pra- I try to practice this, practice this too. find an accountability buddy. I have a neighbor who, uh, we work out together three times a week mm-hmm. and I, I wouldn't be at the gym if it weren't for her, mm-hmm. but I feel accountable to her. Mm-hmm. Um, which is funny that we can't do that for ourselves sometimes. But so I, I think finding an accountability buddy to care for yourself, to be a sounding board, to do th- the things that you know will help you be your best for your family, for your household, for your job every day. That's the first thing. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing is there's a book out there. Oh, what's it called? Um, it's, it's all about how to, how to create change when change is hard. And one of the, the strategies there is setting small, oh, switch. Oh, switch. yeah. I have that book. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. And a, a, a key message from that book is to set small, really concrete, incremental goals. So instead of saying, I'm going to work out more, mm-hmm. it's saying, I will get to the gym twice this week. Am I going to be this fully balanced person all of a sudden? No, but you're going to start somewhere. Right. 
And then finally, and this kind of goes back to a point that I made earlier around like making (laughs) every day easier, take 20 minutes to just sit. For me, it's listening to music or going for a walk, but like reflect and process Mm -hmm. on your day. What's going well? What's been hard? Who can help me? What do I need to get to bedtime? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) My mom used to say, God made nighttime for mommies. (laughs) I love that. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So those would be some ideas that I have. That's great. I I like those. They feel, I mean, they're, they're, I, I love that they're not like, um, it's, it's not like they're brand new things. Right. But you have to, you have to hear the same things over and over again to give yourself permission to, to do them. Right. You've, you say this, people say that like accountability thing is big in, in working out. Um, you know what I mean? Like taking time to sort of decompress for the day or think about what you need. Like that's a wellness thing there. It's not, these are not hard things to do, but yeah. or they're not complicated, even though they feel hard to make time for. You know what I mean? Right. And it comes back to the mindset. I, I need to do, I have to do these things. Mm-hmm. I know for me, you know, there was that Peloton commercial recently. Uh-huh. Have you two seen it? I Every time seen I see it, I get anxiety <laughs> just by looking at it. <laughs> There was so much controversy, and maybe me saying this is going to be controversial, but there was so much controversial around or controversy around it feeling sexist or condescending, and I I saw it, and I was like, gosh, I mean, my partner practically pushes me out the door to the gym because he knows being active means I'm going to eat better, mm-hmm. I'm going to sleep better, I'm going to feel better, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I I just think we have to we have to know that about our know what it is for ourselves that that allows us to do that and and go after it yeah it's it's a good it's a good point because uh we we get triggered i mean like health and and wellness and fitness and all that stuff is a they probably should have thought through that but the fact that you're saying (laughs) you know like the fact is that you have to look at the people around you right and if you have the right people around you who will see what you need like I'm really grateful that my husband can see when I'm freaking out over something and just shows up like just pushes something my way and has learned over the years that he can't tell me to do it but he can just like present it to me let me (laughs) suggest like that. Right. Or just like put it on the table or yeah. he's like, I'll take the boys to. So I'll take like he just decided he was going to he put it on the calendar. He just put on the calendar. Oh, I'm going to take the boys to Massachusetts for the weekend. I was like, I'm not oh. invited. Oh, oh, I guess this is a thing for me. You know what I mean? Like and, yeah. and you don't even see it. You don't see it for what it is when it's happening. But I really needed it leading up to a time where he was going to be gone for three days. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, so totally. it's important to have the right people around you and then to recognize those small things or to do those small things for the people that you love that you where you see that they need them and they That's can't right. do it for themselves. That's right. Well, and I have, you had asked me about a mantra and Mm -hmm. that, this is a perfect segue because my mantra, again, this comes from my mom. Also side note, I forwarded my notes to my mom and she was like, I, I tears came to my eyes. So much of what I'm sharing today is grounded in like what she modeled for me and how she supported me growing up. But she used to say relationships should be 60, 40. We talk about it's, it's common to hear relationships are 50, 50, but but like life gets hard. There's ups and downs, and maybe right now you're giving 60% so that your partner, your loved one, your child feels supported and cared for during a difficult time. And other times, like, you can only give the 40%, right? right? And that loved one can make up the difference. And that's something that I bring to my work with my teachers as I think about their relationships with students as they navigate the ups and downs of the year, 60, 40, you know, yeah. sometimes you can give more and sometimes you, you can't. It's like and you receive. Lamp, you, you know? receive. It's like the lava lamp. Sometimes the bubble's on top, sometimes it's at the bottom. <laughs> and you just have to Wait. learn that, you know, eventually it'll get back up here. Uh-huh. But, the, you know, you have to give That's it time so to also get down here and do exactly. what it needs to do and delve and, and deal with whatever, you know, demons exist down here. But then eventually you come back up, right? Yeah. What goes down? Wait, what, what goes up must come down. Right? And, and unfortunately, given Newton's laws of relativity, that doesn't happen in the opposite right. way. But, but in a lava lamp, it does. <laughs> in a lava lamp, it does. Um, so, Katie, what does success look for, like for you? Uh, that's like such a complicated question. I think for me professionally, um, 
it's important to me to change the game for teachers and honestly for caregivers. Like my mom and my sister are oh, nurses. Oh, just that? Talk- just, just that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no big deal. No big deal. Um, no, people ask me like what my three to five year plan is for this work that I'm doing. And it's not, I don't think my plan is to scale to a team of like 10, 20 people. I want, I want us to be talking fundamentally differently about how we care for teachers, human needs. Mm. And again, I think that extends to other caregiving professions. Mm -hmm. How do we create time and space for them to just pause and process and make sense of their experiences at work? Um, Please and do I, a left TED a, talk. I left a full-time job. I left benefits. Mm-hmm. We moved from DC to Sacramento last year. I believe in this work so deeply that I gave up all of that. Um, it was scary. And, and benefits I'm the are the thing that people stay at work for, even when they hate work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I'm the happiest I've ever been that's because great. I'm that's pursuing amazing. this mission that I believe in. And then I think personally success, I, I don't know, at the end of my life, you know, <laughs> I want people, to, my legacy, I want people to know that I cared for them. I love to cook for people. I love to feed people. I love, I would rather spend money on a trip back home to DC to spend time with my family than like a new iPad. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, and active listening. I think that's huge in relationships, just being fully present with somebody, putting the phone away, putting the computer away, just being so fully present and bearing witness to folks who are experiencing stress or challenge. I love that. I love that. Um, as we're wrapping up, um, we do a thing here, a mom so hard tip. <laughs> I know you're not a mom, but what's your best tip, your life tip? I think, you, I, and I've kind of shared it already, but I think like move your body, exercise, uh-huh. whether it's You're going athlete. for a walk. <laughs> it, well, yeah, I don't, and I don't know if I mentioned this, but yeah, I played ice hockey back in the day in uh-huh. college and I, it, it took a few months as a teacher to realize I, I dropped kind of exercising, gotten away from it. And I realized I was miserable. Mm. So whether it's going for a walk, take a call, standing up and pacing across the room, Try a new workout class. I've never done Zumba because I'm I'm positive that I will look ridiculous. <laughs> but that like new routine, that newness and being able to laugh at yourself is really important. We know the brain science tells us that like moving our bodies helps us stay sane and healthy and happy. So I think I would just say my life tip is like do something every day yeah. to get active. That's great. I love that. And then as we wrap up, um, what's for dinner tonight? Uh, so I, I love to cook. I usually, when I'm working from home, I usually have like the food network on in the background. Um, we've been trying more meatless recipes lately, both for like the, the physical benefits. And we're just trying to figure out what's in our locus of control to reduce our carbon footprint. So Mm -hmm. tonight is, um, black bean enchiladas with some homemade hot sauce and rice. I yeah. love that. Pique casero. Ooh, okay. Homemade hot sauce. Oh, I don't, I don't know anything about that. Well, and I don't need we sauce. use our peppers from our garden, serranos and habaneros. Oh, fancy. Oh, yeah. Okay. Your garden is still Gardner. growing there? So, first of all, are, are you in D.C. right now? No, we're in Sacramento. I'm oh, from so D.C. Was, originally. We moved last year to be closer say, to my partner's family. I was like, why do you still have peppers? <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> Okay, so no, that, we actually, now it makes sense. We're at the end of our, our season, basically, here in Sacramento. It's getting pretty cool, but we, we'll, we'll squeeze out one more batch. That's now, amazing. Sacramento is the capital of California, is it not? Yes, correct. So you're a little north of uh, like LA and all that stuff. It's like more towards yeah. the northern part of the state. Yeah, I'm really enjoying our time here. It's funny. People say that you come to Sacramento so that you're two hours from everything. You know, we're two hours from Lake Tahoe, from San Francisco, from um, Napa, you know, so there's a lot to do. And it's amazing. And the wineries in California are awesome. Oh, yeah. Uh, Oh, my God. Restaurants. Like, I went down into the Escondido Valley. I have a friend that lives down in Temecula. And uh, on our way down from the Grammys, where we were going back to his house, like, we stopped at this amazing winery. And, um, you know, I'm a carnivore. So we had this amazing (laughs) steak. And uh, it's just, oh, the the ambiance and just the lights and, and... it's just absolutely amazing. I just love it. And you're driving down. It's like 80 degrees outside and you look up and the mountains are covered with snow. It's like amazing. Oh, it's, it's, it's so wild. It's near still wild San... to me. Is Sacramento, where did I go this summer? Did I go to San Diego? San Diego, s- south of LA. No, I think. Oh yeah, I, I love to... San Diego. I don't think I went to San Diego because we went to Napa and it was two hours away. I might've been in Sacramento. Oh, yeah. 
I don't know yeah. what it was. When you went to all visit I, your friend. Yes. All I know is that I wasn't prepared for how it felt like we were driving off of cliffs every, like we were doing some winery tours and I was like, I feel like we're going to die. Like what is over? I can't, I can't <laughs> is, quite is this see. Worth it? Yeah. I'm not sure where it is. <laughs> I could buy this. I could buy yeah. this like, um, I don't even know the names of the wines, but I could buy this wine from the store down the street. We don't actually It'd be have fine. to go. Yeah. <laughs> one of the hardest things that you you go through, at least for me, one of the hardest things to get used to is watching the sun set in the ocean, right? Because for mm. us, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Oh, so my you- sense of direction is all off now that I've moved <laughs> close. I totally get that. So, you know, you, you start looking at, you're like, wait, wait, the sun is over the water. That's not normal, mm-hmm. right? Because when right. You, if you look north, you would always see the sun rise on your right. On the water? Right. If, if, you're, if you're looking north. Right. If you're driving I'm north on the east coast, at those hours, I'm not sure. I don't. Um, not or, in, or even yeah, set. <laughs> or even set. Right. Like when mm. the sun sets, for us, it's always setting under uh, over land. Mm. Right. Typically on the east coast. When you're in the west coast, it's always setting on the uh, in water, mm. and it's oh, yeah. so that hard to get used time. to that to see. <laughs> That's going way yeah. over my head. That's not, that's not, like, as a mom for five years, those are not points in the day that I have any, neither the sunrise or the sunset. Oh. Like, I don't have time to stop and, you like, no watch business. that. No, 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 no. Yeah. I do reckon, I, I have been noticing the moon, though, the last couple of nights have been super Amazing. bright and, and whole over here. Well, well we did have so. the last full moon of the decade. Already? So that was right. last night, yeah. Oh, I was up at two o'clock. It was beautiful. Yes, it wasn't it bright. It was bright. Yeah. That was last night. And then not only that, it was helped by the fact that we still have a light blanket of snow from what we got a couple of oh, days yeah, ago. Oh yeah, so it's really bright. So outside. it's really bright outside. Like you go outside oh. and you can see as far as the eye can see. That's awesome. That's amazing. amazing. Well, I went to the store today and I I had this reflection. I was wearing my I was wearing a jacket, but I was wearing flip flops. It was like fall on top <laughs> and summer on the bottom. I was like, what, what am I what doing? Was that like business in the front and party in the back? <laughs> Exactly. I love it. Exactly. I love it. Well, Katie, it has been a joy talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I feel like I've I've walked away with some some things that make sense to me. Um, but I totally want to keep in touch with you. Come back when things yeah. you know, on the next stage, right? Um, or if you get closer to changing the game, like come and tell us what that, that looks like. Um, I would love to continue this conversation because it's a it's an ongoing conversation of how mm-hmm. the people that we were rely on to take care mm-hmm. of our most vulnerable sets of people from the youngest to the oldest it's a it's a heavy weight and yes. who's paying attention to them is really important so thank you for well, all the work that you're doing and thank you for having me this brought me such joy and I shout really out to your mom laughing with you and- yeah and if, you, if mom is listening sorry for the first half your daughter's amazing you've taught her amazing things i think she's doing wonderful work and i wish you a lot of luck mm-hmm. uh in in really changing the game for teachers because it is important it's one of the most important roles that uh we have in our lives right it's those that those that teach us those that guide us and those that take care of our kids so um yeah more power to you well thank you both so much All right. Well, have a good night and we'll talk to you soon, Katie. Thanks. Okay. Sounds good. Take care. (laughs) Bye. Well, gents, that was Katie. She's amazing. Um, it's a very interesting line of work mm-hmm. um, that she does. You know, a lot of people don't usually think about the well-being of teachers. We mm-hmm. look to teachers as, oh, we're supposed to learn from them. But, you know, who who teaches them to stay centered? And that's I think true. that's amazing. It's and, an awesome And work. as a professional development piece, that is about uh, a person and a person's well-being and not about like Career. curriculum or, mm-hmm. you know, like that kind of thing, I think is really important because we don't often – you know, I feel like life coaches is a thing um, or just in general, sort of a, a bunch of coaches. They are necessary and, and, and are a thing, but we don't see them as that. And so you don't value it in a sense of either um, your prof- your um, your your job providing it for you mm-hmm. or thinking that you need to go and find find it for yourself well, that was, you know what i mean that was the other thing i was going to say i mean like if this is if this is something that actually exists i see it as a really good benefit for teachers mm-hmm. nationwide i think that they should start incorporating some of this into the the work environment mm-hmm. right in each school and and uh in districts so that they have this amazing resource to to get them through to 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 get to that potential that one we know they have mm-hmm. and two let them understand that you know you're not going to 
always be on your A game, but here's how you can get there. Mm-hmm. Or, here, or here's how you can remedy that. And here's how you can manage it. Because it's okay for that, those yeah. like few few minutes or moments or days or whatever the time is, as long as you recover, right? And here's how you recover. So I think the, the bigger part of, of changing the game is trying to figure out how to get our country, right? Our culture to value teachers and caregivers the way that some other, you know, a lot of the countries who are doing well and that, you know, we look to in Scandinavia and and in Europe who are doing better, they they regard their teachers in a different way. They also require more of the teachers. And and so if we can get to a point where it doesn't feel like um, only women are teachers or only young people go to be teachers or you go to do teaching as a stepping stool to go into finance or something like that, if we sort of value teaching and caregiving as a thing of itself in and of itself then we can start to put the time and effort and energy into and when you really think about it you're away at work 40 hours on average 40 hours a week from your family Mm -hmm. then if your schedule if your work schedule doesn't coincide with your school schedule you're also putting your children in some sort of care Mm. to offset when they're supposed to be in care or in school and when you're supposed to be at work so on average you're spending about 50 hours a week away from your children probably more depending on how far away from work you live you're relying on teachers and caregivers to give your children at a very young age the fundamental basics of life and how you act how you should be how you should eat and that is a lesson that is is you can't put a price on that. Mm. And when you start to think that the work that teachers are doing, the life lessons that these kids are learning is not valuable and you don't mm. pay them enough, that makes them feel like their their job is not worth it. Mm-hmm. And it truly is one of the most important jobs that you can do in a society Mm -hmm. is to be able to educate children and take care of other people's kids. Mm -hmm. Cause as you well know, it's not easy (laughs) and hard. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that's interesting. It's insane. She's amazing. That's she awesome. is. I'm, I'm so glad that we took the time to talk about this in this way. Cause at first I was like, well, it doesn't matter. I, I really thought that it was, um, relevant to lots of the people that I know that listen to the show, whether you're a parent or a caregiver or a teacher or not, this sort of thing, take the time to take care of yourself so that you can take care of the people around you is really important. So that's I'm amazing. glad we did it. So um, let's wrap up because I think we're, we're doing, we're doing really well. We're tonight. doing amazing. I, I, I appreciate you. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to go give them my little ornament and be like, give me my cocktail. Right. <laughs> Um, well, I think that's it for me. I don't have any other um, any other notes. I think the thing I've been focused on mostly is the decluttering. And so I'm trying to go into 2020 at with a baseline of already being ready at this like lighter. It, I'm thinking about it as like relieving pressure on myself. And I don't I don't want to say it's my New Year's resolution to be less cluttered. I want to say, oh, it's 2020 and I'm already, you know, like I'm already on my way to being lighter. You're ahead in of this the game. Way, right. So that's what I've been focused on the last couple of weeks. So in other words, you already have one foot in 2020. I do. I do. So I just got to get through these next couple of weeks because we're hosting again for for Christmas. And um I'm trying to manage, you know, all of that, all of that. I think you'll be fine. I think we'll be fine. So anyway, come back. um, Wait, not come back. Share the thanks for joining. I don't even know what I'm saying. Thanks for listening today. Thanks for sharing the show because Mm -hmm. that really helps us. Uh, And we'll see you next week and every week after that. That's right. Next week we record on Friday, but yes, we will have true. an episode, and and then we're off for the Christmas week. Yes, we are taking another break because I'm that's all right. about breaks right now. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. This show is produced by Tom Ortiz at Digital Stream Radio. It's available for download on Podbean. Follow us at Facebook at Breezy Moms Podcast or email us at Breezy Moms Podcast at gmail.com. Until next time, don't stress, just breathe.